Okay, here's another tip for cable management. On our trainers, we have two Ethernet cables that have to go across, and we have them nice and tie wrap, which a good friend of mine, he turned me onto the this uh, just the strips of Velcro. In fact, where is the roll of that? Yeah, I buy it in these rolls right here, and we use this a ton when we're trying to get things set up. But yeah, I never would do this in the industry, but especially after talking to my buddy Josh Vargas, he said it was fine. Uh, yeah, we've always had to untie wrap these every time we want to move a trainer. So we just put these, these are completely mechanical couplings for Ethernet. That way, instead of untying all this, I now I can just unplug my 110, unplug my two Ethernet cables, and we're ready to move that trainer somewhere. So there have been some really comical conversations about factory talk design workbench. Remember, folks, I, I'm just, I was just going through it with you. I, I don't have an in, inside connection to Rockwell, but... Probably the most comical one was a, well, was actually somebody talking to someone who was saying that I was wrong about the true and false being wrong. And if you missed it, I said, when you bounce over this, it should say value equals zero. And it says value equals false. It's same here. And they were saying that Boolean is true or false, which I'm not going to get into an argument about. <laughs> but then there, the other guy's like, go look at the help file for it. And so, yeah, if we look at the help file for this instruction, the state of the connection line on the right of the contact is the logical and between the state of the left connection and the Boolean negation of the value of the variable associated with the contact. What the freak? And more I think about it, I'm putting them on everything. So... You know, I do videos over there, but we have two video trainers. Here's a Micro 850 video trainer, and over there right now is the Compact Guard, so they swap places. Hey, what did you want to interrupt my video with? I was saying is, it is RDP. It is Remote RDP. Remote desktop protocol. Remote desktop protocol. Everybody, now you know it's RDP. I don't know what he's talking about, but it's RDP. But what I'm talking about is, yeah, usually I have to wrestle, you know, these end up being a tangled up mess. So, yeah, I hope they work, because... Yeah, I'm going to change it on everything here the, today. Mary Bruce is on the last one. Thinking about it, I probably should have tested uh, one of these trainers before we did all this. I have a question for you. What's the difference between machine sequencing and machine states? So I have a machine sequencing video. I think it has, I don't know, several hundred thousand views. And that's what I've always called it is sequencing. And now I see comments in it about machine states. But, and I know we, I think we kind of throw them interchangeably, but machine states, do they always have to go in a certain sequence or is it that they can be in different states? What's the difference? So the emails are still coming in for factory talk, design, workbench, whatever it is, and click calling it FTDW. You know, I hate acronyms. I can't keep them straight. So let's just call it what it is. But uh, yeah, yeah, Dave Fox wanted to know. Uh, how it works with a micro A10, he's trying to plug it into USB and it's not showing up. Now, guys, I'm not Rockwell support, but I am a little curious, so that's why we're doing this one. But uh, yeah, that, um, what? here's what I think of the micro A10. I've never even put power on that thing, but uh, we'll go over this micro A20. Let's see what it does. Yeah. Mm, we'll plug into the front of it. And then in my case, we're running a virtual box, so we have to do the secret little magic plug-in up here. So, devices, USB, Rockwell Automation. And you would hope it would just show up right there. But it does not look like it is. Let's hit the little refreshy thingy. Oh, no, that, oh, you gotta watch that. At least I put a slash through it now. Um, factory Talk links, it's really hard to see whether it's pressed or not. Uh, advanced settings. Yeah. I do love how pared down this is, but I'm gonna say, even though they say it's compatible with the Micro 810, uh, ooh, now that excites me. It can, um, they can do RS-232 and Factory Talk links light. This is the one piece I'm hoping they'll add to Factory Talk Links for Studio and everything. So Dave, I'm gonna say, yeah, you can program it. You can program a Micro 810. You just can't download the program to the Micro 810. It's a small, small difference.
Kind of comical. Uh, we hosted some training here, and there were all types of swags, all type of advertisements for products. And who wasn't actually advertising theirs? But uh, yeah, us. So we now have a printed brochure about our PLC training. Look at this guy go. We're testing out the new setup. He looks semi-comfy. I'd ra raise that table up. Get comfortable. Look at that, folks. We even got you an adjustable table now. Oh, we got a plug. We need power. Oh, wow. Look, 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 look at this guy go. He's he, he's going to figure this out. Yes, I will. That's, point That's why we send him to school, so you can figure out how to plug something in. Yeah, now we can raise this up. Here you go. Look at that. Oh no, he's got the dreaded fault. Look at him being an overachiever, installing design, factory talk design workbench on his personal laptop. I'm installing it before you gotta pay for it. Oh, well, you may be right there. And that is Michael's background. I don't even know what to make of that. Hoping that's not um, in front of the shop. That's all <laughs> I'm thinking right now.